Can I show you something in the Bible I bet you've never caught before? Two things, actually, in one story. Oh, you're gonna love this today. Remember the story of Legion? He was the guy so demon-possessed, the Bible says he has a legion of demons. Jesus and his disciples are preaching to 5,000 people. But then they get in a boat and risk their lives to cross the lake in the middle of a storm. They land in a cemetery in Decapolis. That means 10 cities. Now, Decapolis is only mentioned twice. This is the first time. That's important. They get to Decapolis and see this man with a legion of demons who has been chained in the cemetery. And the demons recognize Jesus right away. And they beg him not to torture them. It says the demons beg Jesus again and again not to cast them out of the area. Instead, they said, cast us into that herd of pigs over there. Let us enter them, they asked. Now, when I was reading this story and I got to this part, I was thinking in my head, you demons are idiots. Jesus ain't gonna do a favor for you? Are you kidding me, man? Jesus is about to cast you back to hell where you belong, son. Boom! But that's not what happens. Watch this. Jesus actually answers the request of a demon. Are you kidding me? A demon. He actually grants them permission to go into the pigs. Now here's the first thing I want you to see. How many times have you not gone to God with something? How many times have you had a request but didn't go to God out of fear he didn't care? That he won't listen? That he doesn't hear you? That your request isn't important? How many times? The truth is we've all done this. But here's what God revealed to me in this story. If Jesus is willing to answer the request of a demon, how much more so will he do for you? Hebrews 4.16 says, So let us come boldly before the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. God wants us to bring everything to him boldly. If you ever feel like you're bothering God or he doesn't have time for you or he doesn't care about your request, that is a lie of the devil. Of course, Satan doesn't want you taking everything to God because he knows God cares about you. Do you know that yet? Stop believing the lie. Go boldly before his throne today. If he will answer the request of his enemy, don't you think he wants so much more for you, his child, who he loves more than anything? That's good preaching right there. But it gets so much better. Here's the next thing you might have missed in this story. After he heals this man of the demons, the pigs all run off a cliff and die. The people of Decapolis come and see what all the commotion is about. And they see all their pigs are dead. But they also see Legion there, completely healed. Now, I would think they're going to be excited about this. Here's a man who can heal and cast out demons. Yeah, we need this dude. But that's not what happens at all. They get mad about the pigs. The pigs, bro. Seriously? They get so mad, in fact, that they beg Jesus to leave. And Jesus, being the gentleman that he is, he obliges them. But as he's leaving, Legion goes and asks, can I go with you? I mean, I get it. Stay with the people who chained me to a cemetery or go with the guy that just set me free. Hey, yo, Jesus, I'm coming with you. But Jesus tells him no. He tells him instead, just stay here and tell people your story. Let them know what I did for you. Then Jesus and his disciples get back in the boat, go back to the other side and finish preaching to the 5,000. Now, this sounds like the end of the story but it isn't. Get ready, it's about to all become crystal clear. Remember how I told you Decapolis is only mentioned twice? The first time when Jesus gets to Legion. But where is the second time? I'm so glad you asked. You see, the story of Legion is found in Mark 5. But if you move ahead to Mark 7, we see Jesus come back to Decapolis for a second time. Now, the last time he was here, they were so mad they begged him to leave. But watch what happens this time. Mark 7, 31 says, Again, Jesus came through the region of Decapolis. Then they brought to him one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they begged him to put his hands on the man and heal him. Did you just catch that? They went from begging Jesus to leave to begging him to stay and heal. What happened? What caused this major shift in their attitude from only two chapters before? Well, the Bible doesn't tell us exactly, but I think we can figure this out on our own. He told Legion to stay there and tell his story. And I would bet you anything, that's all he could talk about. Every chance he got, I'm sure he was telling his story of how Jesus set him free. And people saw and noticed the change in his life. So now when Jesus comes back two chapters later, they want what Legion had. An encounter with Jesus. Don't miss this. Jesus leaves preaching to 5,000 people to cross a lake during a life-threatening storm to heal one guy and then leave. Why would Jesus do that? Because he understands the power of one. One man's life being radically changed by Jesus led to 10 cities being radically changed by Jesus. If you think your story of how Jesus changed your life isn't important, you are sadly mistaken. Don't ever think for a second, who am I? 
How can I help anyone? I'm just one person. I don't have a huge following. People don't know who I am. It doesn't matter. The Bible tells us we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb, that's Jesus, and by the word of our testimony. That's your story. Jesus was willing to leave 5,000 for one because revolution involves many, but it always starts with one. So let me encourage you today. Go to Jesus boldly with every request you have. He loves you. And don't ever feel like your story doesn't hold any weight. Your story is one of the most powerful weapons you have. Use it. But also, don't ever neglect the one. The one you think is too far lost. The one you think would never accept Jesus. Go to the one Jesus did because he saw the value in every person. And we should too. I mean, you never know. You may be the one who starts a revolution for Jesus by telling your story to the other one. I mean, I guess we won't know until we try. So go do it. Tell your story of how Jesus changed your life to anyone.